When we run an organization, we um, run a business, always we do many things um, to uh, to keep the um, business growing, to keep the organization alive. We we do certain things which um, um, which are, um, are continuous processes because those processes are so important uh, that uh, uh, that we cannot afford to do something to which can actually ultimately lead to discontinuation of that process. Say, say for example, education. In education, if I am <clears throat> setting up a, a school or an institute and uh, doing it as a business proposition, uh, in the sense that I um, offer education at a price and figure out that, okay, uh, whether, I mean, what should be the price so that it can meet my cost and still as an institution we can um, earn some profit, uh, you know, <clears throat> which can be later reinvested or distributed to uh, stakeholders as per um, <clears throat> decisions. So the, the, the core of this process is that, okay, I offer education, I prepare quality material, I offer education and I charge a price for, for my uh, buyers, that's the students or, um, you know, maybe the adult learners. But now, simultaneously now, if I start also working on on the same courses and offering them online for free of cost. That means that I am actually also harnessing this continuity because the whole process which I mean that is actually going to disrupt that continuous process of offering education at a price. I mean, everywhere, I mean, your core activities are such that there we generally we try to be continuous. Okay, we um, try to do the things better, we try to become more efficient, uh, but the process remains same. Uh, but we generally, we don't do things to disrupt that process, you know, which is, uh, uh, you know, we're calling it harnessing discontinuities, you know. So, so um, it's uh, same as, um, as uh, say, you know, um, if I'm, a, uh, I'm running a um, publication house, a newspaper publication, okay, and I am charging uh, um, a, 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 a price uh, and to the readers, uh, uh, subscription from the readers. And now, at the same time, also I am launching my website and I am offering my all news and everything on the website. So, you see, the contradictory processes, I mean, uh, uh, one uh, process which is continuous, which is, uh, uh, which reflects my main business model. While doing that, I am Doing, I'm also harnessing discontinuity. You know, I'm doing certain things which actually discontinue the the, the main uh, process. So that is um, uh, uh, that is what is uh, uh, a very <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, clear uh, aspects of harnessing discontinuity. Um, and also, I think this uh, this often we do when we see. Uh, the uh, the processes in its uh, in its historical context, you know, it, it, I think it, it's very important to understand the trend. Uh, then what happens that even if we do certain 
um, uh, I mean, we do some activities which probably are the mainstay of our business. But at the same time, if we see the in the historical context, how businesses or activities are changing in that in that area, we probably can see a trend and see that any of whatever we are doing as our main activity is coming to an end because some other processes are taking place, which is taking the, the whole activity in another direction. So, uh, um, so if we notice that process, probably we'll see that we are slowly also, you now we are able to harness these continuities. Say for example, again, the publishing industry, moment the, they notice that People are creating websites, people are creating all their individual blogs and everything. Then, while even feeling jittery about it, still they started putting up their own website, putting their news material on the side because, because the historical trend that the past trend was showing that, that simultaneously some other processes are happening, which is totally uh, contrary uh, to their main uh, activity. Uh, and I think the last um, thing in this uh, um, process is the ability to really notice the weak signals. Uh, they, I mean, obviously, in, in this first singing world, or sometimes we don't know actually tomorrow what is going to happen. But still, I think sometimes we can see something happening today, those are very weak signals. And we must be able to pick up those weak signals uh, to, uh, to predict the future, the future which may say that my today's business will come to a halt because tomorrow people won't require it. Uh, say for example, say people who are in the detergent industry, manufacturing detergents. Uh, what may happen, uh, I mean, right now, we see that now with nanotechnology, we may, might be able to develop our uh, material, um, um, the, uh, um, we might be able to uh, make uh, shirts and pants uh, uh, using uh, material which never collects dust, which never gets dirty. And already technologically, it is already, um, uh, we, we see that, yeah, this type of materials are coming, where even you uh, put that, uh, um, suppose the, the shirt in, uh, in mud and I think nothing gets stuck to it and it comes out absolutely clean. There's not, because the quality of the material is such that uh, uh, dust or uh, water, nothing, uh, gets stuck to uh, the material. Now suppose if this material uh, become a, a, a become norm, that means probably whole detergent industry will get wiped out. So this, uh, I mean, when we are talking about harnessing this continuity, to notice this type of weak signals also is important to to figure out what may happen day after tomorrow for the industry.